Hello. Hello and welcome to the Apportion Ministries Lunchtime Family and Friends Prayer Call Minister Paula Denise here today. It's Wednesday, July the 20th, 2016. We're on the phone as well as being recorded for YouTube um, with our Family and Friends Prayer Call today. I will be very honest with you. I'm doing this prayer call with a bit of a heaviness, but I know that the Lord is carrying that heaviness. Um, they're, they're, the prayer list is long on this week. My word of exhortation, I thank the Spirit of the Lord for giving me this exhortation. It's coming out of 2 Corinthians chapter 11. It's really just one verse, but for the verse to make sense, let me just tell you, kind of like on last week, we had a homework assignment, as Joanne said. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10 is where we hear about the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. So we can understand this battle that we're in, one of our prayer requests is for peace and for um, open doors and stuff like that. Some of the ways to walk in that peace is to understand that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. The peace that God has for us is as in John, let me read that, this is not in the thing, but... John chapter 14 verse 27 says, Peace I leave with you. And this is Jesus speaking. This is the red letter. This is the hot sauce. He says, My own peace I now give and bequeath to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Stop allowing yourselves to be agitated and disturbed, and don't permit yourselves to be fearful and intimidated and cowardly and unsettled. And he goes on to say some other stuff, but I just want us to know that our peace comes in knowing God. Jesus at the center of it all, relationship, not just rules and regulations, but relationship. You can have relationship with God by accepting his son, Jesus Christ, as your savior. And here in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, so it's saying in 10, it's some warfare scriptures. When we get to 11, Paul is actually addressing some false teachers that are rising up. One of the other uh, admonitions that I want to say is, who is Jesus to you? Who is he to you individually? Is he the son of God that, that came through a virgin birth that was crucified and rose again and now lives and by accepting him as your savior, you're now delivered from eternity separated from God? Or was he just a good man? He was just a teacher or, you know, I don't do that religious stuff. I, I, I believe in this and I believe in that. Those are other doctrines. Those are other gospels. And so here in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, the apostle Paul is addressing this. There's nothing new under the sun. We may be in 2016 and they came up with new names to call all these other doctrines and other gospels and other theories. But there's nothing new under the sun. It's addressed right here. And that wasn't why the Spirit of the Lord led me here. He led me here because he said, we have to stop. Don't move away from the simplicity of the gospel. So let me read for us. And now we're hearing this 2 Corinthians chapter 11. I'm going to read it in the King James, the Amplified, and the Message Bible. The King James says, But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. We have some doctrines and some people saying that, that there's for salvation, you got to get saved and. you got to accept Jesus and. No, salvation is by grace. It's a gift by accepting Jesus Christ. Now, you do have to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Once you accept Jesus Christ and you accept the truth of the word of God, then now you have to apply it to your life. But you know, your application of what you're making changes to, that, that's not access into heaven or out of heaven is denying Jesus Christ. And so what he's saying is there are other people, these other doctrines that are coming and they're trying to make it really difficult to be saved. They're giving this long list. And the Amplified says, but now I'm fearful Lest that even as the serpent beguiled Eve by his cunning, so your minds may be corrupted and seduced from the wholehearted and sincere and pure devotion to Christ. See, the enemy is coming in trying to get us double-minded, looking over here. Right now, what's released in the United States of America and in the world is a spirit of fear, rage, and anger. That's not the mind that we're supposed to be operating from. The Message Bible says, And now I'm afraid that exactly as the snake seduced Eve with his smooth patter, you are being lured away from the simple purity of your love for Christ. And so what do we do for that? We unleash Holy Spirit. He's our teacher. He is our revealer. I love how the Amplified gives the seven names of Holy Spirit, the seven roles of who he is and what he does for us. He is our strengthener, our advocate. I'm coming out of memory here, but I'm trying to look it up. There we go. He's our counselor. 
comforter, helper, intercessor, advocate, strengthener, and standby. He's the one that'll keep you from getting caught up in mess. Something on the inside of your spirit will be uncomfortable and saying something ain't right here. So our word of exhortation is 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Stay with the simple gospel. Quit adding all that other stuff to it. And as you stay with the simple, and as it says in Matthew 11, 28 through 30, as you learn of him, that's when you're taking on his yoke, and his yoke destroys the the. The, his anointing destroys the yokes of the enemy and by having his yoke on you the enemy can't yoke you up anyway and as you learn of him what it means here John chapter 14 15 and 16 and 17 are everything that Jesus was talking about I tell people and not just ministers people period the whosoever's the believers that believe in Jesus Christ it's good to read the last words of Jesus Christ once a month read John chapter 14 through chapter 17 and see what you're living that, that's your gospel what are you believing in there was the promise of the Holy Spirit. And so let me just read these little nuggets and we'll go forward praying for this prayer list. God is a God of order and things should be done decent and in order. However, let us not get legalistic and dogmatic with God's people. Let's not be mean or rude. God is a God of compassion. He's a loving God. He's a compassionate God. He said in the Old Testament, he said, I'll woo you out to the wilderness to win you back to me. He's a loving God. He's not beating you over the head. We're not living, we're not living in the reign of judgment. We're living in the reign of grace, whereby even if you make a mistake, the grace of God will cover you. And your weakness is his strength made perfect when you acknowledge that you have weak areas. And it goes on to talk about that in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and chapter 12. And here's another little homework. Read 2 Corinthians chapter 13. I was reading that, waiting on the clock to strike 12. And it just sounds really, it's some good stuff in there that will encourage you. Really, really encourage you. We'll close out our prayer lead, reading that last verse. But understand this, that God has the capacity to redeem the time when you repent and get in line with his will and his word so you may feel like I don't wasted all this time but when you repent for being out of alignment whether it was a rebellion a direct choice somebody beguiled you like it said somebody somebody tricked bamboozled you and made you think one thing and it really was another when you repent and get in line with God he redeems the time understand this that we are living in some defining moments you know a defining moment is something that happens in your life that truly changes the way you see yourself the way you see God the way you see everything going on in your life we are living in some times of defining moments when we'll realize what am I going to church for anyway what am I reading the Bible for anyway why am I getting on this prayer line anyway why am I listening to these play these are some defining moments you know why you're doing it you're doing it to grow closer to God you're doing it to say no more and more of who he is and who you are in him if you're doing it for any other reason it's not the right reason but these defining moments these life events that cause you to see God in another light or another dimension. Many of us are walking through those right now. Understand this, the simplicity of knowing the, the triune God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and, and the simplicity of working out your own salvation with fear and trembling. God, we thank you and praise you for this word of exhortation and encouragement that you have given us in your word on today. We thank you for making yourself real to each and every one of our family, friends, and loved ones. For six years, every Wednesday, we get on this line and we come I'm lifting up a word of exhortation based on your word, not opinions or thoughts, but your word, oh God. We come lifting up a word of exhortation, giving your word access into our lives. We say, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven as we lift up your word. Thank you for exhorting us in your word, that your word will become part of our vocabulary, that it will become a part of who we are so that we would speak your word, that we would be able to really do rule number one. Don't panic. Rule number two, trust God. Rule number Number three, remember rule number one and number two, because we are rooted and grounded in your word. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. I come lifting up this prayer list. I pray right now. I, I, I take this time and I call up. Thank you, God, that we come repenting for the sins of the fathers. That's a principle in your word where there were, you said, I am a just God and a jealous God, revisiting the sins and the iniquities on the sons and of the, to the third and the fourth generation. Some of those people we don't even know, but we come right now standing in the gap saying, forgive us, forgive us, O oh Lord, oh Lord, on behalf of the sins of our fathers, on behalf of those that have gone before us. And we may not know what all of the sins were, but the ones that really re release a judgment from you is mercy 
murmuring and complaining. Forgive us of the sins of our forefathers of murmuring and complaining. That's what happened in the, in the wilderness. Forgive us of murmuring and complaining when we didn't understand what was going on. And we thank you, God. I stand and I lift up the Turner family. I lift up, uh, that, that's the Turner Adams, the Scipio Turner family. Thank you for showing me my roots. And I lift them up. I ask you, oh God, to cancel any generational curses. The blood of Jesus cancels those. But when we come right now, as we go in the courtrooms of heaven and we legally apply the blood in the Potier Duplichain, Turner Adams family, anybody that's on this line or listening or watching this YouTube, release your family name right there. God, we go in the courtrooms of heaven and we apply the blood of Jesus as our advocate, Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, our advocate in the courtroom that causes uh, to say it's, it's null and void those plans and assignments of the enemy that have been released in our bloodline. And we thank you, God, for what you're doing. I come lifting up my children. Anybody that's on this line, lift up your children and your grandchildren right now and thank them for the word of God in, in Acts when he said, you and your whole household shall be saved. So I thank you, God, that our children and our seed will come to know you for real, though, in a no-so way. Thank you for the example and the epistle that you've allowed us to be in their life. And then we're praying and lifting up the family of Shamika Bolden. God, I pray right now, even as I was handling something about this young lady who was tragically taken from the earth realm on last week, I pray for her mother. I pray for her family that as what they're dealing with, with having to bury their daughter that was just about to get her master's degree. God, I can't even, my mind can't wrap around that. I look to you as the Lord God, sovereign ruler, that you are in control. I thank you for your Holy Spirit that is our comforter that will be there with Shamika's family. God, as they are actually at the service right now as we are praying, uh, memorializing, funeralizing her and, and closing her chapter here in the earth realm on this morning, on this day. But I thank you, God, that you be the God of peace and comfort where they have questions that they have no answers for, that you, God, would come in and pour in some peace in ways like never before. We give you glory and honor. And then we lift up Chloe Love's family as they're going to funeralize her on Friday, which is her birthday. I just can't imagine being a mother having to lay your daughter to rest, to, to eternal rest on her birthday. But God, you see and you know everything that, that surrounded that. So we pray and ask you to cover all of those family, friends, and loved ones of these two members that were tragically taken out of the earth realm on last week. You saw, you know, and we thank you, God, that there are many hearts that are hurting, that are crying out for understanding. But God, I thank you that you step in and you be the peace in the midst of it all. I give you glory, I give you honor, I give you praise. And then I come lifting up the prayer request from Yvette, God, asking for prayer. God, I thank you that all of us, especially these family members that I was just praying for, that you allow us to operate out of the sound mind, out of the one mind. Let us not be blown to and fro because life happens. The cares of this world come to snatch and steal away from us the things that rightfully belong to us. But we will keep our mind stayed on you. You promise a perfect peace to those who keep their mind stayed on you. And so I lift us up and I thank you, God, that peace reign. Somebody's online. Please place your phone on mute. Thank you so much. It's causing noise in my ear. It's breaking the flow. But God is good. He's desired for us to understand that there is a peace, that there is a he wants us to operate from the sound mind. He wants us to operate. One moment. One moment. That's not the button I wanted to push. Thank you, God. There we go. He wants us to operate from the sound mind that he's given us, from a strong mind that stayed on him. He promised to keep us in perfect peace. He promised that we would have a peace that passes all understanding. No, you may not understand the events that are going on in your life right now. That's, that's Yvette's prayer request or even Jackie's prayer request. You may not understand everything that's going on right now, but understand that he understands. Understand one thing, he's in control. Some of the things that we are going through, even the tragedies on last week, it's not God did this and why did he allow that? It is the fact that we live in the in with fallen mankind. And just like in our scripture when it said that how did mankind get in this state? Because Eve was deceived and man sinned. And so we are in the fallen state of mankind where the God of this world, lowercase g, has an has the right to mess with anybody that doesn't understand that they belong to the God of heaven. And so God, thank you that as we set our minds on the God of heaven, not the God of this world, we operate 
with a sound mind and we operate in a place of peace and comfort and strength in you. God, we're lifting up Rakia. We thank you for being with her as she's going throughout these travels. Thank you for safe travel back. Thank you that you got her here, even in the midst of uh, vehicle troubles that you stepped in. And we thank you for being with her as she gets, as I, I had committed her back in April to your hands, like Moses, like Jacob had committed Moses to the ark and put him down the Nile and knew that you were watching over him. I commit your daughter, recommit and keep her committed to you, God. Put her in that little Malibu and send her down I-10 and she is in your care that you are watching over her, God. Thank you for the sound. I thank you that each and every one of us would learn to live life on purpose and to walk our lives out with purpose, knowing and understanding that we live every day like it's our last day, but we live every day like we're going to be a hundred plus years old. We give you glory and honor. And so I lift up Miss Shauna, God. I thank you for the tow truck driver. God, I lift you up. Her prayer request was for spiritual prosperity. She said, not just for money, but that God would increase me. So God, I thank you for making yourself real to this young lady in this week, in this time, and in this season. Thank you for supernatural acceleration of all the truths of your word that you have exposed her to, that she would be able to operate in this place of spiritual prosperity for your glory. And then God, I lift up my cousin Pookie, as he's going through a family life situation, I lift up his children to you. I thank you for peace reigning in the hearts and the minds of your children. God, I thank you that you've called for this line to be a place where family and friends can send in their prayer requests. Yeah, we're doing it right here on the line on Wednesdays, but when I got this prayer request over this weekend, I began to lift up and bombard heaven on behalf of, of this request, and I thank you for being there. And then, God, we're standing with Mother Roy in Dallas, where her great nephew was found dead. He just graduated from high school and was going to college. We don't know what's surrounding that, but we thank you for your peace being with Mother Roy and the entire family as they're going through. We lift up Alexis, Felicia, and Aaliyah as Aaliyah is preparing to go to the Junior Olympics. God, I thank you for supplying all of her needs according to your riches and glory exceedingly abundantly above all that her or Felicia could ask that you, oh God, are supplying her needs. Thank you for Alexis having a healthy baby and continually to grow. Thank you for pulling this family together tighter and tighter in your love. We give you glory. We give you honor. I lift up Leslie to you, God, and I thank you for this new life assignment that she has accepted from you, oh God. Thank you for those laborers that you sent alongside her to be able to help her fulfill this purpose in her life, and we just give you glory and honor that you have called her for such a time as this, and you have continually spoken to her year after year after year. And we're standing with our last prayer request from Jackie. God, we thank you for peace, overcoming anxiety. We thank you for increased finances and open doors. In Acts, you said, I said before you had an open door. We're praying for open doors. And when the doors open, we will be strong enough in you to walk through those open doors. And we will be prepared. Yeah, because we kept our mind stayed on you, oh God. And we thank you that in the midst of storms, in the midst of all that is going on around us, we will recognize you, oh God. We're going to do rule number one. Keep calm. God's in control. God, we thank you for being in the center of our lives. We give you glory. We give you honor. I pray right now for healing anyone that is on our prayer list that needs healing. Healing from cancer, diabetes, whatever, broken bones, problems in your dental, whatever. We serve a God that can do creative of miracles. He can recreate bones. He can, he can re cleanse our bloodline in the natural. So we thank you, God, for your word in Psalm 107, 20, where you say you sent your word and healed the sick. We thank you for your word in Isaiah 58, where you says, shall our help spring forth mightily. We thank you for your word that by every stripe, bruise, wound of Jesus Christ, can we come take, receive, and appropriate our healing in this time and in this season. We thank you, God, that we're not seeking you for a miracle. We're seeking you as the healer. And you manifest as the healer, and the world calls it a miracle. But that we thank you that miracle signs and wonders follow them that believe we believe you to be the healer we pray for marriages right now that they will be strengthened in this time and in this season whereby the enemy is launching an all out assault against marriage the institution of marriage between a man and a woman against whatever is going on causing division we come against the spirit of confusion and chaos that's trying to operate in our families family, friends, loved ones whether married, 
every single whatever. We come against the spirit of confusion and we release the spirit of peace. We release the spirit of unity in this time and in this season. Thank you for exposing the plans and the tactics and the hands of the enemy. God, I ask you to bless each and every person that has been on this prayer line or watching this YouTube. God, speak to our hearts. Make yourself real. Make yourself known in this time and in this season. And our response will be, sir, yes, sir, your servants are listening. Have your way, oh God. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. In the matchless, mighty, wonderful, powerful name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and bless God. One moment.